about a year ago, one of the associate pastors approached me and said, we've identified a young man who wants to take the lay speaker route and be trained to be a lay speaker, a lay servant in the United Methodist Church. I said, okay. And I was introduced, reintroduced, because I already met him, to Marcus Llewellyn. He had started taking his training about a year ago. Um, and it's interesting, this morning we shared a word from Nehemiah about recognizing a need, being prepared, staying on your task, making your prayer uh, requests specific. And here we are one year later, the speaker that you're going to hear in a few short minutes is Marcus Llewellyn, who did all of that one year ago. He's a junior at Kennesaw State University majoring in accounting. He plans on graduating in 2020. You will graduate in 2020. <laughs> and getting his CPA shortly thereafter. He's been a member of Cascade United Methodist Church since 2015. Not on the paper, but I want to share with you, Marcus and his family are originally from Chicago, but they moved here from my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, and actually attended the church I grew up in in Louisville, Kentucky. So bring it all full circle. Where my brother happens to be an associate minister. Um, he serves as a, member, as a member of the Cascade Audiovisual Department and the streaming ministry. Though you may not often see Marcus work, you see Marcus's work. When you look at the streaming, when you look, there he is. When you look at um, the pictures of Marcus, all these things. So who's doing this now that you're not down there? Stephanie, Stephanie okay, somebody's doing it. He's also an occasional teacher for the Believer's Bible School class. His entire, members are member, his entire family are members of Cascade. His mom, Karen, his dad, Marvin, his siblings, his siblings, Christian, Marvin, Anthony, and Camille. And I'm so glad that your parents were able to make it this morning because I think you flew back this morning from New York visiting your son who's at West Point. Thank you for being here this morning. Appreciate it. So after you hear this wonderful choir sing, the next word you will receive will be from Marcus Flewellen. Thank you.
All glory to God. All glory goes to God. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. All glory to God from whom all blessings come from. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal Father, we thank you today for all that you've done for us. We thank you for all that you are. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your love that you show towards us each and every day. We do not take our blessings for granted because we know that all good and perfect things come from you. Now bless us as we learn more about you through your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs> well, good morning, church. I'm uh, honored and humbled to be standing before you today for Laity Sunday, the 11 uh, a.m. service. As uh, Well, I have to write this down. My name is Marcus Llewellyn. <laughs> I didn't know if I would forget everything if I came up here, so I have to write all this down. My name is Marcus Llewellyn. Uh, as Darius Rollins said, I'm a junior at Kennesaw State University. I will be uh, majoring in accounting and graduating in 2020. Can't say maybe anymore. I will be. Full disclosure, this is my first sermon ever. Uh, I've never preached before, so I honestly don't know what's about to happen. I've seen <laughs> Baptist ministers, Methodists, Church of God. I have no idea what's about to happen. I'm definitely not going to sing. I can't sing though, so that's not going to happen. I can't sing. I know that for a fact. Uh, when I first joined the lay ministry, I had a conversation with Darius Rollins about uh, becoming a lay minister, and I thought I thought we had laid out this like two or three year plan before I got up here. I was going to take more classes and build up to this. And that conversation was seven months ago, man. Like we, that wasn't a year, huh? This is the plan. You didn't tell me that. You told me something completely different. If those of you who don't know Darius, his favorite word is voluntold. His favorite word is voluntold. So when he calls me in the middle of the week, I already know what's about to happen. I'm going to be voluntold to do something. But no, every time I've stepped out on faith, it's always been a blessing. So I don't think so. Things will be any different. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm so grateful for you for uh, even granting me this opportunity to be up here. Uh, before I formally get started, I just want to thank several people who made this possible. The entire clergy staff, I, I'm so grateful for you, not just for this opportunity, for what you do throughout the year, every week. I mean, people really don't know, and I, I'm truly appreciative of everything you guys do, truly. Um, and in particular, and Darius mentioned this during my intro, um, there was one member in particular, we were having a uh, Tuesday Bible study, um, Tuesday night Bible study, youth Bible study, and... Uh, I was asked to speak. I was asked to pre preach on, a, a, you know, to the class about what that particular topic was. And after that class, one of the associate pastors, like he said, came up to me and uh, said, have you ever been interested in joining the lay ministry? And he told me uh, what that was all about. And he got me in touch with Darius and with Sid Kriya. And, and that got the ball rolling to get me up here right now. So I really want to thank Robert S. King. Pastor Robert S. King, who is now a pastor at another church, but without him seeing that in me and saying, pointing me out and saying, do you know about this? Can you do this? I wouldn't be here right now. So I want to thank him for everything he's done, not just for, he really loves this community. He really loves this church and he loves God and he loves uh, people. So uh, I'm incredibly grateful to him. Thank you to the entire lay leadership, the entire lay ministry. It's an honor to serve alongside you. Uh, ever since I've joined this church, I've been embraced by so many incredible people. So thank you to the entire men's ministry, to, to brothers Rich Wilkins and Kyle Carruthers. And thank you to the believers class led by the incomparable Dr. Julia White, uh, who, has, <laughs> who has done so much for me and encouraged me and motivated me. Uh, again, had to walk out on faith on a couple of those occasions, but I'm incredibly grateful. Thank you to Fred and Kim Duckett for your love and support. Thank you to the entire Young Adult Ministry. Thank you to the entire AV department, who's upstairs, Ron, Tim, and Stephanie. Yep. And thank you to <laughs> the entire streaming ministry, who's downstairs, Monica and Aziza and the entire team. For those who don't know, uh, every week they broadcast the services and concerts and different events that happen in church so that people throughout the country and around the world can tune in and join us and fellowship with us and be a part of our congregation. So uh, I'm incredibly grateful to be a part of that team, honored to be a part of it. Uh, and this whole congregation has just blessed me uh, my entire life. And, and finally, the thing is my mom... <laughs> My mom didn't tell me until 15 minutes before the service started that my grandmother and my aunt would be here. So that adds a little bit. That wasn't to help me. That, um, 
I, I, you know, I, I know for a fact that I am the, the beneficiary of generations and generations of exceptional, praying, God-fearing, church-loving people. And that's the reason why I'm up here right now. So to my mom and, and my dad and my aunt and my grandmother and my grandfather, I, I assume was back in Chicago, my sister Camille, my, uh, my uh, brother Marvin who's watching from West Point Academy, hopefully he's watching from West Point Academy right now, he might not be, that's true, and then my sister who's at Hampton uh, University in Virginia, uh, I love each and every one of you so very much, I really do appreciate all of you. Okay, here it goes. The scripture today comes from Psalms chapter 8. It's the entire eighth chapter of Psalm. Don't worry, it's only nine verses. If you are physically able, may you please stand for the reading of God's word. It's Psalms chapter eight. They have the NIV version up, the New International Version. Psalms chapter eight, Psalms chapter eight. It's weird hearing your voice back as this. It's very weird. And it reads, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers of the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet. All flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim, the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I just want to speak for a couple minutes from the title Royalty. Royalty, royalty, royalty. <laughs> Some, someone caught that reference. Y'all know that reference. Uh, I remember being at Barack Obama's inauguration. That was in 2009, January 2009. I was 14 years old. My entire family, we went to D.C. Uh, we saw the actual, um, when he got elected, we saw that in Louisville, Kentucky, at our church. But we actually went to D.C. to uh, actually be there for the inauguration. We didn't get in the crowd. We were in a building. I forgot which building. But we're in a building on the same street as uh, the Capitol. So you can see it from a distance. But obviously, every TV had it on, like everybody. It was, the, it was the news. Everyone was buzzing about it. It was huge. Everybody was ecstatic. The whole crowd was electric. I personally was thrilled because I got my first cell phone that week. It was really a big, and it wasn't that good a phone either. It was like a garbage, like y'all would laugh at me if I showed it right now. It was absolutely awful. It wasn't an iPhone. You see these five-year-olds with iPhones. Like this is, that's not my life. But I remember I was 14 years old at the time, and the moment from that whole experience that resonates with me the, the most is my dad crying. And my dad was crying at the inauguration. He was also crying when he got elected because he just kept saying, I never thought I would live to see this day. I never thought that this was possible. Now, I'm not just saying this because he's my dad, but you're not gonna find somebody who's smarter, who's better educated, who's harder working, who loves people more, who's better qualified for that position than my father. But he was told through life, through experiences, through what the world had told him, he knew that no matter what he did, no matter how hard he worked, no matter how qualified he was, he had a ceiling that he'd never be able to break. There was something that society said he would never be able to do. The world we live in is great at telling people what they can't do. The world we live in is great at telling people what they can't be. The world is great at telling people what they can and cannot accomplish, what is and is not possible. It is great at boxing people in. It is great at projecting their own definitions and limitations on people. It is great at telling people what their floor is and what their ceiling is. And the world is really great at creating those ceilings. They just, they just create these barriers. They create these systems that intentionally marginalize and exclude people, intentionally cast people out and keep people down. Rarely does the world inspire people or motivate people or encourage people to be their best selves. Rarely does it allow us to truly see the value and the power that each individual has within them. And unfortunately, it's especially awful for people of color, for African Americans. The world is great at telling us exactly what we should be, 
exactly what fits in their definition, what we should or should not be, how we should or should not act. And these stereotypes, these images, these definitions never are positive. They always try to increase the negative negativity and decrease the positivity. And the truly awful thing is that after a while, after the world tells you again and again what is impossible, when it tells you what your flaws are, why it tells you why you'll never be this, why you can't do that, the awful thing is we begin to believe these things ourselves. We begin to internalize these things. We begin to perpetuate these things. Instead of believing in ourselves, instead of speaking words of encouragement to ourselves, Instead of believing that we are beautifully, wonderfully made in God's image, we end up keeping the lies that people tell us, that the world tells us. We begin internalizing these things and holding our own selves back from where we could be. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. We serve the one true God. We serve a God who constantly, continuously empowers and encourages us. We are his children. Newsflash, the world doesn't have any power, really. The God we serve has all power in his hands. The world doesn't have the final determination of who you are. It doesn't matter what the world thinks you can't do. If God says you can do it, you can do it. To be honest, it doesn't really matter what you or I think we can or cannot do, because if God says we can do it, we can do it. And, because, and God, because of his power, because of his love and his grace and his mercy, he has made us royalty. We are children of the Most High God. In this text and throughout the Bible, it is stated over and over again that God crowns those who love him and live according to his purpose. When you look at verse 5 in the text, David, the author, said that God crowns us with glory and honor. Psalms 149, verse 4, for the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 4, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. James chapter 1, verse 12, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. As children of the Most High God, we are royalty. We're all royalty. Is that simple? So how do we come to grips and recognize who we really are? How do we truly internalize what God has told us throughout scripture and throughout our lives, who we are? Well, like any good Methodist, I have three points. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Yeah. Point number one, in order to truly recognize that we are royalty, we must first acknowledge God's power. God's power, God's power. When you look at the scripture we just read, you'll realize that it's bookended by acknowledgement of who God is. It starts and ends with the exact same sentence, O Lord, our Lord, the majesty of your name fills the earth. Verse number one also adds that God's glory is higher than the heavens. Higher than the heavens. That means we, we got to know that there are no words in the human language that can adequately define the power and the awesomeness of the God we serve. Like, really think about it, really try to understand it. God's excellence, God's power, his might, it has no limits. It has no restrictions, it has no barriers. He's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, he is the king of kings, he is the lord of lords, he is alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, he is Jehovah Jireh, the provider, he is Jehovah Shalom, the peace that only the Lord can give. Man has limitations, but with God all things are possible. He heals the sick, he gives sight to the blind, he created the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets, the earth. He created everything that has lived, everything that is living, and everything that has yet to be born. He supplies all of our needs each and every single day. He delivers exceedingly and abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. He is God. We need to recognize God's power. We need to know that this is the God we serve. Verse number six, Psalms 8 verse 6 says, You made them rulers over the works of your hands. David is the author of this book, of the book of Psalms. We read, we read the whole chapter, so you know the context of this particular verse. We know that the you in this verse refers to, obviously, God. Then refers to us, to people, to mortals. Quick question, what are the works of God's hands? Everything. Everything 
God is not a creator, he is the creator. Everything that ever has or ever will be has come from God. The problem is that we too often forget God's power. We put human limitations on a God who has none. We act as if God needs to work on our time and not the other way around. I heard this great saying um, several weeks ago, which goes um, something like this. Uh, if God is your co-pilot, then you and him need to switch seats. <laughs> it's really good. It's really good. We need to recognize the sovereignty of our God. We act as if God is not the creator of time. We act as if God is not in control. God is always in control. Doesn't matter the situation, doesn't matter the circumstance, doesn't matter how bad things look. Doesn't matter what we think is or is not possible. God is always in control. God always has the power. It's never too late for God. Nothing is impossible for God. Nothing surprises God. Like, how great do you really think God is? Like, really think about it. How amazing do you think God is? Like, how wonderful do you think he is? How powerful do you think he is? Like, come up with a, a definition or an image in your mind as to what God really is. I'm here to tell you that whatever idea you have of God, he's even better than that. He's even better than you could ever think or imagine or fathom. It extends beyond human understanding. God does not operate the way you or I do. He doesn't operate the way people do, and I thank God for that, man, I really do. Because, you know, we think we have all the answers, but we are limited. We are very limited. We have limited knowledge, limited information, limited resources, limited experiences, and we're here telling an almighty, all-powerful God what he can and cannot do and what is and is not possible. Look at verse number two. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Now think about that. Children and infants. The New Living Translation, which I have a copy of that actually my, I believe my parents or my grandparents gave me. It says children and nursing infants. When you think of children and infants, these are the weakest, least developed, and most dependent people in society. But what David is saying is that even when the children, even when infants, even when the weakest people in society praise God and use God's word, enemies are conquered. You are protected. That's how awesome our God is. And the problem is we get distracted by people who think they have power or who we think they have power. We get distracted by who thinks they have authority or who we think has authority. We have to remember who God is. Not only do we have to remember God's power, but we also need to know about God's promises. And when we believe God's power, we must also believe in his promises. God is all powerful, all knowing, fair and just. And when God says he's going to do something, He's going to do it. It's one thing to make a promise. It's another thing entirely to have the power to actually do it, you know. Throughout the Bible, there are so many promises that God gives us. When you read the Bible, as you read it, you're going to run into blessings and provisions and words of affirmation and encouragement that God, ha that God has given us, and they're listed throughout Scripture. Look, the life, we, life is not easy. Life simply is not easy. And especially when you decide to become a Christian and to walk with God and to have a relationship with God or join a ministry, it gets even harder. It doesn't get easier. You know, I was thinking about our mission statement, which has been brought up a couple times, about discipleship, service, and social justice. I just want, in case you all didn't know, those things are not easy. Those things are not easy. But the thing that we have to, and this goes back to recognizing God's power, is that... The God that we serve is too great for the church to have average goals. The church, the, the God that we serve is too awesome and magnificent and fantastic and all powerful for us to be like, eh, you know, eh, maybe, eh, well, we should be trying to achieve things that are beyond our grasp because God gives us the ability and the power and he's given us these promises to help us achieve these things. There's no shortage of trials and tribulations that come with this life. There truly isn't. 
But the reason why we can do incredible things, the reason why Cascade United Methodist Church has been doing incredible things for 92 years is because we serve a God with whom all things are possible. The only thing God can't do is fail. But too often we let our own fears and insecurities decide our actions instead of trusting the God who was greater than anything or anyone who could oppose us. When we say, trust his we say we trust his promises, but we also have to live our lives accordingly. To make it through this life, we, might, we must not only know God's power, but also the promises he's made to us. So what are God's promises? In the words of my pastor, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. If you feel like you can't trust anyone, Isaiah 26, 4. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is the rock eternal. If you're ever terrified about your future, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. If you feel like you can't fight anymore, Isaiah 40, 29, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. If you ever get afraid, Isaiah 41, 10, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and uphold you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. If you ever feel like you're being attacked, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. If you ever feel like you're too far gone, remember Jesus Christ died while we were yet sinners for each of our lives. Remember 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. If you feel insecure, if you feel like you don't have what it takes, Philippians 4, 9, God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and his glory in heaven. If you feel like God's not there, Deuteronomy 3, 16, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified for the Lord God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. If you're ever feeling worried, Philippians 4, 7, the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And if you feel like the enemy is winning, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, be thanks to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Christ Jesus. And these are just some of them. So I encourage everyone, I have two apps on my phone. I promise you this isn't a paid sponsorship. No one, no one paid me to do this. But I have a Bible app on my phone, but I also have an app on my phone uh, called God's Promises. And what it does, there's actually several apps that do this, but what it does is that it will actually, if you're ever feeling... Um, weak, if you're ever feeling vulnerable, if you're ever feeling like you're lost or, or whatever the case may be, you can actually click on the app and listed are dozens if not hundreds of promises that God has listed throughout the Bible for his believers. And in fact, it can, a couple of them, you can get a daily verse every day so that, you know, it just pops up automatically and you might get exactly what you need in that given time. You never know. And finally, once we embrace God's power and we internalize God's promises, we then need to know God's plan. Some of you might have already saw that coming. <laughs> Verse number four, what are mortals that you should think of us, mere humans that you should care for us? Keep in mind, this is David asking this. This is David asking this question because he can't comprehend. He can't understand why an almighty, all-powerful, fair and just, completely innocent and faultless God loves and cares about us. Verses number five through eight, four, you made them a little lower than the angels and you crowned them with glory and honor. You put them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, the sheep and the cattle and all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, the fish in the sea and everything that swims the ocean currents. Now, what does that scripture mean? Well, it's not God telling us to get animals, birds, and fish and start a farm or something. <laughs> it's really saying that through God, we have power that we couldn't possibly comprehend. Through God. We got to keep that in mind, that everything needs to go through God. There are almost 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet Earth right now. 7.7 .7 billion. The Population Reference Bureau estimates that there are more than 108 billion people that have been born over the course of human history. 108 billion people have been born over the course of human history. But it's crucial to know that even though there are 7.7 .7 billion people on planet Earth right now, 
even though there are 108 billion people who have been born over the course of human history, God loves and cares about each and every one of us individually. God cares about you specifically. Psalms 139 verse 14 says that we are all beautifully and wonderfully made. Romans 12, 68 says that we all have different gifts. Nobody is exempt, nobody is excluded, nobody is a mistake or, you know, it just happened. You're here for a reason. You all, we all have gifts and talents and abilities and strengths, all which can serve the kingdom of God. We all have a place in the kingdom of God. The verse goes on to say, according, uh, we all have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. We all have different gifts. And I, I can't discount what you have, and you can't discount what I have. Because we were all made in the image of God. We were all beautifully and wonderfully made, each and every one of us individually. We have all been given gifts and talents and abilities and blessings and ideas and perspectives from God. We have all been called to be a part of, a, to be a part of God's body, to be a part of the internal kingdom. And Romans 11:29 says, God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. That means what God has given you, nobody can take away. Not even you. Think about the most extraordinary people in the Bible. Abraham, Sarah, Moses, Joshua, Noah, Mary, Joseph, Mary, oh, I've said Mary twice, Paul, Peter, and the rest of the disciples. These were flawed people. These were deeply flawed human beings, no different than you or I. But they were able to do extraordinary things because of the God they served. The God that still works and intervenes for all of us. God used Paul, somebody who was notorious for persecuting followers of Jesus Christ. Paul's responsible now for half of the New Testament. Let God use you. So I encourage everyone here today, please don't hide your gifts, don't hide your talents, your abilities, or your perspectives. The kingdom of God has room for each and every last one of us. And I encourage you to join ministries and charities if you haven't already. All, all the ministries here are phenomenal, filled with incredible people who, who truly love God. We're all sinners who are serving the Most High God. Because, I mean, you can't, don't, don't just hide these things away. You never know what your gift or talent might benefit, why you might be the one, the spark, that ends up taking something further than could have ever been imagined through God. I mean, one of these days, I mean, one of these guys might ask you to preach or something. <laughs> In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. glory be to God. Marcus Llewellyn. <laughs> Cascade, you've heard a word today. The, jo the doors of the church are now open. If you are visiting with us today and you are looking for a church home, you're looking for a relationship with Christ, you want to recommit your life to a life of service. If you're looking for some place to align yourself, with a church that speaks to service, discipleship, and social justice, there's a place for you here. We're waiting for you. There's plenty of work to be done. Plenty of work to be taught.
come on, God is. We invite you to come with us. Say that together, God is. Let's bless the Lord in this place and give it up one more time for the speaker of the hour, my brother, my friend, Marcus Fluellen. Let's praise God for him, Cascade. Well, friends, we have had, we've had an amazing Laity Sunday. I cannot stress the importance of having all of us understand that this is a ministry of pastor and people. It's not just clergy but it's clergy and laity that when we come together under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, there is nothing that we cannot do. Now, I want, I want to say this because Brother Darius Rollins preached us to glory at 8 a.m. this morning, and Marcus gave an amazing, awe-inspiring, glory-filled word at 11 o'clock today. Now, how do you? 24. You're 24. I started ministry at 18. I remember my first sermon was when I was 19. Seeing you at 24, stand here and proclaim what thus says the Lord with not only comfort, but conviction and compassion. Y'all, I don't know about you, but y'all may be looking at another preacher. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not prophesying or anything. However, I, I, I just... There, there, are, there are some moments that you just have to pause and you have to open your eyes and you have to thank God for what's before you. When I preached early in my life, there were mentors that saw something in me that I, first of all, didn't see, but God saw, but God was speaking but I just couldn't believe he was speaking to me. Marcus. <laughs> Son, let me tell you something. When God speaks, you listen. For he who has begun a good work in you will complete it to the day of Christ Jesus. We could have a good accountant and a good preacher at the same time. That means you'll always pay your taxes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. But I want to pray for you. I want to break all protocol. I know we got a benedict and, and get out of here, but I want to pray for you. Because what I see is that God is working with you. That there's something that God is doing on the inside of you. 
that the world is going to see and that people are going to experience. And I'm grateful to be your pastor that we can nurture it here in this place at Cascade. Church, stretch your arms towards Marcus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand humble today. Lord, we stand grateful today for we have heard from heaven. We've heard the word of the Lord, O oh God, from your servant, your son, Marcus Fluellen. O oh God, we thank you that this platform which you provided for him today was no mistake. God, like he said, you plotted and planned this day out. And Lord, even if he was voluntold to do this, he was voluntold through your servant, by your hand, at your direction. And God, we believe that right now that he who has begun a good work in Marcus will complete it to the day of Christ Jesus. Oh God, I pray that the long nights that nobody else understands, I pray, oh God, that the days that he's sitting in his dorm room and he's hearing from you, times in which his family won't understand, times in which his friends won't get, time in which his, uh, his fa church family won't even understand, God, I pray that you would speak to him and that he would hear what the Spirit has to say to Marcus. And God, I pray that this would continue to be a church. God, that calls out the bright and the shining from among all of those who need to hear words of encouragement and hope. God, I thank you that you're still anointing and you're still calling people to bring hope in the midst of a troubling and dying world. In the name of Jesus, I pray that he's walking, as he's walking on his campus that you would cover him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And like Paul told Timothy, God, help him to stir up the gift that is within him. We thank you, God, for him right now. We thank you for his family. We pray, God, that you would cover him with the blood of Jesus, that as he pursues your calling upon his life, that he would say, yes, Lord, here I am. Send me. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, and all of God's children said amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Oh. Well, man, come give us a good benediction so we can get out of here. Amen. All glory to God. All glory to God. Let us pray. Eternal Father, without you we are nothing. You created everything, including us. Please help us to walk closer with you. Please help us to understand that there is a place for us in your kingdom. Please help us to understand that you are sovereign Lord. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, that you can accomplish anything, that we can accomplish anything through you. Now please, Lord, help us to always look for you, to always search for you, to always study your word, and help us to stay, stay the course. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs>